In this lesson, we will attempt to learn how to balance a redox reaction. We are going to use an anionic reaction, meaning spectator ions will not be considered. This method is called the ion electron method. So we will use the ion electron method. Let's pick a reaction containing ferrous ions. So we have iron plus two reacting with an oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate, Cr2O7. In this reaction, Iron plus two produces iron plus three, and the dichromate ion ends as a chromium plus three. As we see, this reaction is not balanced. We need to make the same number of atoms before and after the arrow. Chromiums have to be the same, oxygens, hydrogens, and most importantly, the charges have to be balanced. We're going to follow five easy steps. The very first one is to divide this net ionic into half reactions. So we are going to first divide into half reactions and uh, Fe plus 2 will end as Fe plus 3. And the dichromate ion, Cr2O7, negative 2, will end as Cr plus 3. We are attempting to show the oxidation and the reduction reaction. We have divided into half reactions, and our second step is telling us to balance all the elements. We'll check for iron and the first half reaction we have one iron in the reactant side, one iron after, so that's okay. We look at the second half reaction, we have two chromiums in the reactant side. So I am looking at that two, so I need a two in front of the CR to make them balance. Now I see that I have my oxygens and my hydrogens to take care of. I have seven oxygens in the dichromate ion. So in rule number two, it tells me that for every oxygen that I need, I am allowed to add H2O. I'm going to add water. So since I have seven oxygens in the reactant side, I am going to add seven waters. That introduces my seven oxygens in the product side. Now my hydrogens are not balanced. I have seven times two, 14 hydrogens. In the right and on the left, I do not have any. So that same rule tells me that for every hydrogen that I need, I am allowed to add H plus. Once again, this redox reaction is in acidic medium, so we're free to add all the water. These are aqueous acidic mediums and all the H pluses that we need. So we need 7 times 2, 14 H pluses, and I will add 14 H pluses on the left. So now I have 14 hydrogens and 14 hydrogens. My hydrogens are balanced. Two chromiums and two chromiums. My chromiums are balanced. One iron and one iron. So I balance my oxygens, my hydrogens, my irons, my chromiums, and I'm ready to go to step three.
step three is to watch out for. This this is the one where a lot of people make mistakes. So let's be careful here. We're simply going to consider charges. This charges, just like the masses and every atoms, have to be addressed and balanced. How do we do this? We'll look at both sides of the arrow and we'll see what charges we have. On the first half reaction, we have a charge of plus two in the iron plus two. And in here, we have an iron plus three on the right side on the first half reaction. So they're not balanced. So I am going to balance the charges by adding electrons to the most positive side. Plus three is more positive. To make them equal, I am going to simply add one electron. So now I have a charge of plus three minus one plus two after the arrow, which equals a charge of plus two before the arrow. Let's look at the second half reaction. What do we have in the second half reaction? I'm balancing charges, and I realize that I have a charge of plus six, plus six, because I have two Cr plus three, two times three is six, and before the arrow, I have a dichromate ion, which is a minus two, and 14 H pluses. So I have 14 positive minus two, which gives me a total of plus 12. How do I make a plus 12 equal a plus six? I am simply going to add electrons to the most positive side. Plus 12 is the most positive side. And I would need to add six electrons So if I'm adding six electrons, I have a plus six before and after the arrow. So I am adding electrons to the most positive side, and in this case was the plus 12 side. And when I added the six electrons, now my charges are equal. Plus six before and after the arrow, plus two in the first half reaction before and after the arrow. So I'm done with rule three. And now I'm going to the fourth step. We're almost done. In the fourth step, we need to make electrons cancel out. Let's see what this means. Well, if the ferrous ion is losing one electron, there's no way that that dichromate ion could pick up six. Okay, so I need to make the same number of electrons and both have reactions. Same number of electrons. How do I do this? I simply multiply the first half reaction by six. If I multiply the same, the first half reaction by six, meaning I'm going to have six ferrous and six ferric, I will get six electrons being released by the ferrous Therefore, the dichromate can pick six electrons. So I made my electrons equal. And since they're in opposite sides, they will indeed cancel out. So let's rewrite this second time. We have now six Fe plus two going to six Fe plus three and six electrons and the second half reaction stays the same so I am still gonna rewrite six electrons 14 H pluses my dichromate Cr207 and after the arrow I still have my two Cr plus threes and my seven waters. My last step after I made my electrons cancel out is to simply add 
both have reactions. So I made it to step five. So I am finally going to rewrite my final. Before the arrow, I have these reactants. So I'll bring them down. I have six Fe plus two. I have 14 H pluses. This is an acidic medium, so I'm adding probably phosphoric acid or some kind of weak acid to make this go. I have my dichromate, I'm bringing it down. And then on the product side, I now have six ferrics, six Fe plus threes. I have two chromiums and seven waters. Okay, so I added both have reactions. The only thing I need to do is check. And I now want to make sure that every element is balanced, meaning my irons, my chromiums, my oxygens, my hydrogens, and my charges are as well balanced. So let's start. We have six irons in the reactant side, six irons in the product side. We're good. Two chromiums in the reactant side, two chromiums in the product side. That's balanced. 14 hydrogens to begin with. Seven times two, 14 hydrogens at the end. Seven times one is seven oxygens in my product, and I have my seven oxygens in my dichromate. So all the elements are balanced. Now let's finally, for the grand finale, look at charges. In the reactant side, I have six ferrous, six times plus two, that gives me a plus 12. On top of that, I have a plus 14 and a minus two. 14 minus two is another 12. 12 and 12 gives me a total of 24. Again, 6 times 2 is 12, and I have 14 positives here, 14 positives, and a negative 2. So that gives me a total of plus 24 before the arrow. Let's see, what do I have after the arrow? I have 6 times 3, that's a positive 18, and the 6 ferrics. Then I have two chromium plus threes, so that's two times three, another six. So that gives me a total charge of 24. So I have 24 positive before the arrow, 24 positive after the arrow. Therefore, this reaction has been balanced. Again, the five steps that we used were, first we divided into half reactions, and in this step we saw the reduction and the oxidation half reaction. In my very first half reaction, electrons were lost, so that's an oxidation. Oxidation. The ferrous ion is losing electrons, ending as a plus three. So that ferrous ion is a reducing agent. My second half reaction, I have a reduction taking place. So in this second half reaction, a reduction is taking place where my dichromate ion is gaining six electrons and resulting as chromium plus three. The dichromate ion is undergoing reduction and it itself is it is an oxidizing agent. So after we divided into half reactions, we balanced all the elements, looking at the irons, the chromiums, the oxygens and the hydrogens, we balanced the charges by adding electrons to the most positive side we made electrons cancel out, and finally we add them both. 
and we checked it for all elements and for the charges.